On Wednesday evening, a SpaceX capsule carrying four astronauts successfully docked with the International Space Station, kicking off a five-month mission. This mission, dubbed Crew-4, carrying four American and one European astronaut to the space station lifted off aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center on April 27. About nine and a half minutes after liftoff, the rocket's first stage, which launched three previous missions including Crew-3, landed on a drone ship in the Atlantic. The Crew Dragon capsule, dubbed Freedom, carried NASA astronaut and mission commander Jell Lindgren, pilot Bob Hines, mission specialist Jessica Watkins, and European Space Agency astronaut and mission specialist Samantha Cristoforetti into orbit. This Crew-4 mission is the first launch for Hines and Watkins, and the second flight to the station for Lindgren and Cristoforetti. The astronauts had spent 16 hours in orbit aboard their Crew Dragon spacecraft and had circled the Earth more than 10 times before making an autonomous docking to the station's Harmony module. The spacecraft's hatch, which provides a safe airlock between the capsule and the space station, was opened about 90 minutes later, allowing the astronauts to leave the spacecraft and enter the station. The Crew-4 team joined seven astronauts already on the ISS, increasing the orbiting lab's population to 11. The Crew-3 astronauts, who have been on the space station since November 2021, will depart in early May, while the Crew-4 astronauts will remain on the station until September. The Crew-4 mission is SpaceX's seventh human space flight and fourth operational crew launch for NASA. SpaceX's fifth astronaut mission to the ISS, Crew-5, is planned for launch in September of this year. The Crew-4 mission launch followed the return of the first-ever all-private astronaut mission to the International Space Station, dubbed Axiom-1. The mission carrying American Commander Michael Lopez Alegria, his second-in-command and mission pilot Larry Connor, Israeli mission specialist Aitan Stibb, and Canadian mission specialist Mark Pathy, was launched to the ISS on April 8 aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft Endeavour. During their 17 days stay aboard the station, the four crew members performed experiments researching stem cells, chronic pain and sleep disturbances during space travel, and many other subjects. At the conclusion of their research, the crew put on their SpaceX flight suits, boarded the Dragon capsule Endeavour, and undocked from the orbiting laboratory before splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean on April 25. The AX-1 mission was organized by Axiom Space, a privately funded American space infrastructure developer based in Houston. Axiom intends to continue flying passengers to the ISS, and its agreement with SpaceX was extended last year to cover three more missions. Following a string of failed wet dress rehearsal attempts, NASA's Space Launch System rocket has returned to the Vehicle Assembly Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. On March 18, the rocket was brought out to the pad for the first time, where it was to conduct the wet dress rehearsal, a test of the pre-flight operations, propellant loading, and countdown that includes everything except engine ignition. Unfortunately, the test was plagued by technical issues, and after three attempts, NASA decided to bring the rocket back into the Vehicle Assembly Building for repairs. Over the next few weeks, NASA teams will work on replacing a faulty upper stage check valve and a small leak within the tail service mast umbilical ground plate housing. They also will perform additional checkouts before returning the rocket to the launch pad for the next wet dress rehearsal attempt. After completing the wet dress rehearsal on the pad, the rocket will be rolled back to the assembly building to arm the flight safety system, charge the batteries on the Orion spacecraft, and update the flight computer software on SLS before being rolled back to the launch pad for a third time for liftoff. Officials at the agency hope to finish repairs and testing on the Mega Moon rocket in time for the Artemis 1 mission to launch no earlier than August, about two months later than previously planned. The James Webb Space Telescope has moved one step closer to its operation, as NASA confirmed that the alignment of the Space Telescope is now complete and the observatory is now capable of capturing crisp and well-focused images. According to NASA, all of Webb's four powerful instruments have completed the seventh and final stage of telescope alignment, and Webb's mirrors are now directing fully focused light collected from space into each of its instruments. Henceforth, Webb will move on to the next step, called the Science Instrument Commissioning which is expected to last a couple more months before scientific operations begin in the summer. The alignment of the telescope across all of Webb's instruments can be seen in this series of images that capture the observatory's full field of view. Each image is its own deep field, displaying a plethora of stars and galaxies, similar to the famous Hubble deep field images. NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter recently captured aerial photographs of the wrecked remains of some of the components that helped deliver it and its companion, the Perseverance rover, to the surface of the Red Planet last year. 
The helicopter surveyed the remains of the parachute that slowed the spacecraft's descent onto Mars in February 2021, as well as the shattered backshell that protected the precious $2.4 billion robotic mission as it hurtled through the Martian skies at 20,000 km per hour. The backshell's protective coating and many of the 80 high-strength suspension lines connecting the backshell to the parachute appears to have remained intact during Mars' atmospheric entry. Spread out and covered in dust, only about a third of the 21.5 meters wide parachute can be seen in the images, but the canopy shows no signs of damage from the supersonic airflow during inflation. According to NASA, several weeks of analysis will be needed for a final verdict, and the images have the potential to help ensure safer landings for future spacecraft on the Martian surface. After 25 years in development, Russia finally launched the Angara 1.2 rocket into orbit from the launch pad at Plesetsk Cosmodrome on April 29. Due to the classified nature of the mission, not much is known about the identity of the payload. The most likely payload is a radar satellite, intended for use by the Russian military. The Angara rocket family was created in 1992 and is an entirely Russian launch vehicle. Previous Russian launch vehicles have used parts or equipment from other former Soviet Union countries. Angara 1.2 is a small lift launch vehicle capable of placing 3,000 kg to low Earth orbit. The rocket is comprised of two stages, each of which uses kerosene as the fuel and liquid oxygen as the oxidizer. The universal rocket module, the rocket's first stage, is powered by a single RD191 engine, capable of producing 1,920 kN of thrust at liftoff. Angara's second stage, known as Universal Rocket Module 2, is powered by a single RD0124A engine that has four combustion chambers and exhaust nozzles, but fed by a single turbopump system. The engine is capable of producing 294 kN of thrust in a vacuum. Friday's mission was the first operational flight of an Angara family rocket, after one suborbital test flight in 2014 to verify that all systems worked, and three test flights of the Angara A5 variant to prove its ability to launch payloads to a geostationary orbit. The next planned flight of Angara 1.2, carrying the CompSat-6 Earth Observation Satellite for the Korea Aerospace Research Institute, will take place before July of this year. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. SpaceX is currently busy renovating the orbital launch tower in preparation for future Starship launches. On April 6, SpaceX teams removed the Starship Quick Disconnect umbilical from the Quick Disconnect arm and transported it to the build site. For those who don't know, the Quick Disconnect mechanism is used to load propellant into the Starship prior to an orbital flight. The Quick Disconnect mechanism and the QD arm are designed to retract prior to launch to ensure that all hardware disconnects and pulls back from the rocket safely and reliably during liftoff. When the QD system was first installed in November of last year, the plan was to launch Starship 20 for the orbital flight test. As the plan has now changed, and SpaceX intends to launch the upgraded Starship 24 or later prototype for the orbital flight test, the QD mechanism had to be removed from the launch tower and replaced with a new one. This is because SpaceX has recently redesigned the Starship and the ship's quick disconnect plate has now moved one ring section up. One possible explanation for this design change is that SpaceX wants to shorten the length of the plumbing that runs from the QD plate to the propellant tanks. Another reason could be to make it easier to install the three additional Raptor vacuum engines on the ship, a future design change that Elon Musk has previously hinted at. SpaceX may have calculated that the QD plumbing could be a barrier to the easy installation of the additional three Raptor engines. On April 28, SpaceX brought a brand new quick disconnect mechanism to the launch site to replace the old QD system. A few hours after its delivery, the QD mechanism was lifted and installed on the QD arm of the launch tower. We can expect some movement checks on this brand new system in the coming days to ensure that it is functioning properly. SpaceX is also making minor tweaks to the rocket stacking and catching arm of the launch tower. SpaceX employs vertical stabilizers attached to the tower arms to stabilize the ship while lifting it for stacking operations. On April 26, the diagonal braces of these vertical stabilizers were removed from the booster catching arm. Three days later, the teams reinstalled the diagonal braces on the tower arms. I'm not sure what changes SpaceX has made to this component. Back in March, the quick disconnect claw, which is used to stabilize the booster during Starship stacking, was removed from the QD arm by SpaceX teams. We can expect SpaceX to install an upgraded stabilizer claw on the QD arm in the near future. 
So, in short, it is evident that SpaceX has learned a lot from their recent Starship stacking operations, and they are rapidly upgrading and optimizing Stage 0 in preparation for the upcoming orbital test flight. The upgrades do not end with the launch tower. During a recent aerial flyover, RGV aerial photography spotted upgraded super heavy grid fins lying at the construction site. Compared to the previous grid fin design, SpaceX added more grids to this new fin. This dense fin design will undoubtedly increase the weight of the fins, but I believe that computer simulations might have shown significantly better control over Super Heavy with this new design, forcing SpaceX engineers to upgrade the grid fin. The first booster prototype to receive these upgraded fins could be Super Heavy Booster 7. Speaking about Super Heavy Booster 7, you may remember I mentioned in my previous video that Booster 7's downcomer, or transfer tube imploded during a recent structural stress test. Brand new transfer tube parts were recently been delivered to Starbase to repair the damaged Booster 7 downcomer. The first batch of functional Raptor version 2 engines arrived at Starbase on March 30. And less than a month later, Raptor 2 engines that passed static fire testing without damaging or destroying themselves have begun to rapidly pile up inside one of Starbase's three main production tents. In the last four weeks, SpaceX has delivered at least 18 of the upgraded engines to Starbase. The company needs at least 39 flight-ready Raptor 2 engines for the inaugural orbital flight test. According to recent reports, we will have to wait at least another month to see if Starships will be launched into orbit from Boca Chica. Because the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has delayed its environmental review of SpaceX's Starship rocket program in Texas for the fourth time, pushing a decision to the end of May. The FAA, which began its environmental review in June 2021, delayed making a decision three times in the past five months and now expects to release the assessment on May 31. Even though the environmental review and permitting processes have been repeatedly postponed, there are some strong indications that the assessment will be completed by May 31. For example, the Endangered Species Act consultation has been recently completed and the Section 106 review's target date has only been pushed back to May 6. If the Section 106 review is completed by May 6, the environmental assessment will be the only project left. As a result, the chances of a final decision being announced by the end of May are extremely high. But it has to be noted that the completion of the environmental review process does not guarantee that the FAA will issue a Starship orbital launch license to SpaceX. SpaceX's license application must also meet FAA safety, risk, and financial responsibility requirements. Moreover, even though the final report is delayed for a month, it will have little effect on Starship's orbital flight test, because the launch vehicles, Starship 24 and Booster 7, will not be ready for a flight until July the earliest. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.